turn off the game. Yeah. Oh, you were going to run for the for the uh, chat. I don't think we need to do that. We'll see how our bandwidth holds up. It's not the greatest in the world. Maybe it'll do. It appears all right so far, from my end anyway. Yeah. Do you have a, a live in-studio audience there today, Maharaj? Praveen. Oh, Jai. Finally, great. So I'll, I'll start Kirtan unless he wants to. You can start. Okay.
Vishnupad, Bonamun Supati Prahaj Kacharja, Ashto Tarasatishi Shimat, AC Bhakti Vedanta Shami Raj Rupa the Gitae, Ananta Koti Vaishnava in the Gitae, Nama Charger Shidhari Das Thakur Gitae, Prem Sikaho Shikrishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nitananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi, Gold Bhakti in the Gitae, Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopina, Sham Gunagata, Kunigidi Govitan Ki Jai, Vrindavan Tam Ki Jai, Nabadip Tam Ki Jai, Jagannath Puri Ki Jai, Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Jamana Mai Ki Jai, Tusi Devi Ki Jai, Bhakti Devi Ki Jai, Samaveta Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai, all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. Go, Primanande. Hari Hari Bo. Thank you, Maharaj, and thank you, everyone, for joining us for Srimad Bhagavatam class with His Holiness Jayadvaita Swami. It is Monday, August 15th, at least in the Western Hemisphere, and the year is 2022, and we're starting a new chapter tonight in the third canto, seventh chapter. Further inquiries by Vidura. So we're starting with text one tonight. Very eager to hear everyone's contributions in the form of comments, questions, etc. Just take care to not type in the chat box if Maharaj is reading into it. Things go so much more smoothly then. And um, we're glad you could be with us, Maharaj, in this next leg of your tour. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Akendra Puru. Thank you for the very nice to your time. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Sri Shukuvacha Evam Bruvanam Maitreyam Vaipayana Sutoputaha Rinayani Vaparatya Pidura Pratyapashata. Sri Shukadev Goswami said, O King, while Maitreya, the great sage, was thus speaking, Pidura, the learned son of Dwaipayana Vyas, expressed a request in a pleasing manner by asking this question. Viduru Vacha Raman Katam Bhagavatash Chin Matrasya Vikarinaha Lilaya Chapi Ujeran Nir Gunasya Gunakriyaha Sri Vidura said, O great Brahman, since the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the complete spiritual whole, and is unchangeable. How is he connected with the material modes of nature and their activities? If this is his pastime, how do the activities of the unchangeable take place and exhibit qualities without the modes of nature? Purport. As described in the previous chapter, the difference between the super soul, the supreme lord, and the living entities is that the activities of the lord in creating the cosmic manifestation are performed by the lord through the agency of his multifarious energies. But this manifestation is bewildering to the living entities. The lord is therefore the master of the energies, whereas the living entities are subjugated by them. By asking various questions about transcendental activities, Vidura is clearing the misconception that when the Lord either descends on the earth in his incarnation 
or appears himself with all his potencies. He too is subjected to the influence of Maya, just like an ordinary living entity. This is generally the calculation of less intelligent philosophers who consider the position of the Lord and that of the living entities to be on the same level. Idura is hearing the great sage Maitreya refute these arguments. The Lord is described in this verse as chin matra, or completely spiritual. The personality of Godhead has unlimited potencies to create and manifest many wonderful things, both temporary and permanent. Because this material world is the creation of his external energy, it thus appears to be temporary. It is manifested at certain intervals, maintained for some time, and again dissolved and conserved in his own energy. As described in Bhagavad Gita, Bhutva Bhutva Priliyate. But the creation of his internal potency, the spiritual world, is not a temporary manifestation like the material world, but is eternal and full of transcendental knowledge, opulence, energy, strength, beauties, and glories. Such manifestations of the Lord's potencies are eternal and are therefore called nirguna, or free from all tinges of the modes of material nature, even up to the mode of goodness, material goodness. The spiritual world is transcendental, even to material goodness, and thus is unchangeable. Since the Supreme Lord of such eternal and unchangeable qualities is never subjugated by anything like material influence, how can his activities and form be conceived to be under the influence of illusory maya, as is the case with the living entities? Well, there's a lot here. Om Ajnana Timiram Dasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurin Militam Jaina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Pistam Stapitam Jaina Bhutale Swayam Rupakata Maityam Vadhati Shapadantikam Vande Hang Shri Guru, Shri Jatapada Kamalan, Shri Guru Vaishnavamscha, Shri Rupam Shagrasatam, Shahagana Raghunatan Vitam Stam Sajiva, Satraitam Savatutam, Parijana Sahitam, Krishna Chaitam Atevam. Shri Radha Krishna Padan, Shahagana Radhita, Sri Vishakan Vitamstra. E Krishna Purana Sindho, Dina Bandho Jagatpate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta Namostute, Tapta Kamsana Gaurangi, Radhe Vrindavaneshari, Prashapanu Sute Devi, Pranamami Hori Priye, Vansha Kolpita Rupyascha, Kripa Sindho Pyaevacha, Pratitanam Pavanevyo, Vaishnavevyo Namo Namaha, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, 
Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasari Gaurabhadarinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This important question by Vidura uh, deserves a uh, long purport to the past. And I think I'm just going to continue reading a little more. A juggler or magician displays many wonders with his acts and arts. He can become a cow by his magical tactics. And yet he is not that cow. But at the same time, the cow displayed by the magician is not different from him. Similarly, the material potency is not different from the Lord because it is an emanation from him. But at the same time, that manifestation of potency is not the Supreme Lord. The Lord's transcendental knowledge and potency always remain the same. They do not change even when displayed in the material world. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, the Lord descends on the earth by his own internal potency, and therefore there's no question of his becoming materially contaminated, changed, or otherwise affected by the modes of material nature. The Srila Prabhupada is here glossing see many pages back on this device. Mm -hmm. Avikarana Chinmatra Chinmatrasya Avikara. The Lord is Avikara. Vikara means change. Um, we take birth, we stay for some time, we grow, um, we have byproducts, dwindle, and die. Um, this is the nature of the embodied living entities. But the Lord is uh, Avikara fully spiritual, we, in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, avikaryo yamuchate, the soul is unchangeable. But because our souls are embodied, we go through these changes. But Krishna is avikara. He has no material body, therefore he doesn't change. And uh, near Gurnasya, we'll read about that. The Lord is saguna by his own internal potency. Saguna means having qualities. But at the same time, he is nirgun, um, without qualities, since he is not in touch with the material energy. The restrictions of the prison house are applicable to prisoners who are condemned by the king's law. But the king is never affected by such implications, although he may visit the prison house out of his goodwill. In the Vishnu Purana, the six opulences of the Lord are stated to be non different from him. The opulences of transcendental knowledge, strength, opulence, potency, beauty, and renunciation are all identical to the personality of Godhead. When he personally displays such opulences in the material world, they have no connection with the modes of material nature. 
The very word, chin matra twa, is the guarantee that the Lord's activities are always transcendental, even when displayed in the material world. His activities are as good as the Supreme Personality himself. Otherwise, liberated devotees like Sukadev Goswami would not have been attracted by them. Vidura inquired how the Lord's activities can be in the modes of material nature, as is sometimes miscalculated by persons with a poor fund of knowledge. The inebriety of the material qualities is due to the difference between the material body and the spirit soul. The conditioned soul's activities are displayed through the medium of the modes of material nature and are therefore perverted in appearance. However, the Lord's body and the Lord himself are one and the same. And when the Lord's activities are displayed, they are certainly non-different from the Lord in all respects. The conclusion is that persons who consider the Lord's activities material are certainly mistaken. So we can observe here that Vidura is expressing some doubts, asking some questions, and in the purport, through the prophets answering them, the answers will come from Maitreya as we go along, but Srila Prabhupada's not going to wait for that. He's already speaking to the doubts that Vidura expresses. Brahman Katam Bhagavatas. Chin Matrasya Vikarana. Oh, Brahman. Katam, how is it? that Bhagavan, the personality of Godhead, is, um, although he's Jin Matra, completely spiritual, and Avikaranaha, unchangeable, unchangeable and uh, Nirguna, um, free from material qualities, how is it that he performs Yujiran, uh, uh, Guna, Kriya, uh, activities that have qualities. Lilaya uh, Chapi, he performs pastimes, uh, but they uh, they have qualities. Uh, there are changes going on. Uh, something happens. Something else happens. So, how is this possible? Does it mean that the Lord's uh, quality uh, in pastimes are material? That there, there's, or what connection is there between the pastimes of the Lord and the modes of material nature? Um, or uh, how is it that, as Prabhupada puts it, that these pastimes could take place without modes of nature, uh, without qualities? Uh, it, it, the, the, these pastimes have qualities, but uh, the, the Lord has no qualities, or the absolute truth has no qualities. So how is it that the Lord, having no qualities, could be performing pastimes that do have qualities. And if he's performing pastimes that do have qualities, how are they not material? How are these pastimes not material? And uh, what is the connection between the, um, the Lord and these, if the Krishna is performing uh, activities that have some sort of connection with the modes of material nature, then what does that say about his spiritual existence? 
how can the supreme spiritual existence have any connection at all with the modes of material nature? The Chin Matra is completely uh, consciousness. He's the complete spiritual whole. He's uh, nothing but spirit. So then how do these material qualities, how do material qualities come into play? Uh, and if they're not material qualities, what are they? The, this speaks to the doubts of the impersonalists. The impersonalists are sure that God would not have um, activities for the absolute truth must be devoid of activities, form, such a limiting thing as form, qualities, again, are picked up from material relativity, um, qualities, form, pastimes. Um, these things all have to do with this qualitative world where one thing is distinguished from another because of the power of the modes of nature. How could these things be there in the absolute truth? Tulsi Priya. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Please extend my obeisances. So, um, yeah, I really like this purport, and uh, I appreciate you saying that Vidura is, uh, is, is expressing some doubts because I also can't say necessarily that I believe in my doubts, but they crop up in my mind all the same sometimes. Um, and that's the idea, which I guess is maybe a, a kind of an Advaita idea that if Krishna, as the as the Supreme Brahman, expand, expands himself, and I know that that does not happen in time, it's, it's eternal, it's, you know, as living entities, we coexist. How is it that if Krishna is pure, perfect, complete. Um, how is it that the expansion of himself as Jiva, Tattva, how is it that we are not, we are we are prone to be in Maya? It's like, I mean, and, and then there's the whole Achintya Beta Beta Tattva thing, which I can accept. But I'm, as I'm listening to all this and reading this, I'm thinking, I really don't get it. You know, I mean, if, if, if I really, I can accept it theoretically, but at the same time, it's not very internalized with me because I'm thinking, how can we are one, and diff one with and different from Krishna? And yet, how can there be any part of Krishna that is subject to the influence of Maya. Yeah, these are the doubts expressed. And the question about the nature of the living entity, that'll come up in a few verses mm -hmm. ahead. Um, but yes, I mean, the absolute truth is uh, known to be Eka Brahma Tvitiya Nasti. The absolute truth is one, mm -hmm. uh, absolute undifferentiated oneness. So then how can all these qualities, where do you get all these qualities and, and pastimes, except uh, perhaps from your um, anthropomorphic uh, idea, notions, or uh, the way the Shankarites would have it, that the absolute is, is present in two features, one uh, with qualities and one without qualities. And the one with qualities, of course, is adulterated. Um, but of course, why would the absolute truth, if one, how could the absolute truth appear in two different aspects? This is uh, contrary to, to oneness. But that's another question. Um, let's see, Sarashati, is, is that right? Yeah, I think so. Sarashati, I've heard from some people that since Krishna's pastimes show him to be changing bodies from in, infinite to adult, like ordinary jivas under control of time. So how can this growth be different from a conditioned uh, jiva? Yeah, his growth, his, well, any of it, his activities, his having qualities, his having 
um, development um, in, in different age from from childhood to youth to old age. How is it possible? Therefore, in, in the Bhagavad Gita, Tom Veta Parantapada, what is that? Abhuni may be Titani, Janmani to the charging. Tanya ham beta sarvani, not from beta pranta. Uh, what to speak of passing through childhood and youth, and of course, there's no old age for Krishna, uh, which they, those who are wondering about ordinary jivas, well, there's already a difference. The ordinary jivas go from birth to youth, childhood, youth to old age. Krishna goes to childhood and youth and stops and stays there for. The, how many, how many years and years and years? So already, uh, take that into account. Uh, but uh, extending the matter, uh, not only does Krishna go from childhood to youth, but he changes bodies. Apparently, that is, he appears in different incarnations. Bhuni may be titan, janmani. He goes through many different births. But Tanyaham Veda Sarvani, I remember all of them, Krishna says. And not Tvam Veda, Paramatapama. You've forgotten. And Srila Prabhupada explains that we forget because we change our bodies. But Krishna's body is transcendental. In the Prabhupada quotes, Dehi Deha Pipedo Yam, Neshre. Uh, vidyate neshvare uh, In the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there's never any difference between body and owner of the body. They're both spiritual. Uh, so uh, this is the nature of the essential question asked by Vidura. And we'll see, you know, Prabhupada says elsewhere in the first, in the introduction, I think, of Srimad Bhagavatam, that we have to patiently go through the first nine cantos in, a, in order to capture the effects of the 10th canto. And we see how crucial this question is to understanding what we're going to read in the 10th canto. If we think that these are some sort of projections of um, material qualities in relation to the absolute truth, we're not going to understand the 10th canto. We need to understand how it is that Krishna is transcendental to everything and yet displaying apparently material activities, um, going to school, getting married, having children, um, so many things. Um, these are all, this is what we do. So if he's doing these things, how is he not just an ordinary or extraordinary human being? These questions will be answered. All right. Um, yes, Kendra. Oh, thank you so much, Maharaj. I was just thinking while you were speaking how uh, how much I appreciate that Prabhupada is taking the time right now at the beginning of this purport, at the beginning of this chapter, to clear a lot of the doubts that that uh, Vidura himself may raise because the whole first nine cantos are for clearing all those doubts that may arise about who we're actually talking about. As, as I was reading and listening to the purport, I was thinking how, uh, and, and maybe you could speak much more eloquently to this point, how the, the, the tack that Prabhupada takes in his argument is, is different than it's, it's, to me it seems different than it would be for maybe a, a beginning audience. He, he makes statements like, Mm, the Lord is therefore the master of the energies, whereas the living entities are subjugated by them. Um, it's like you're already on board with the idea. You're, you're, you're beyond the, the preschool level of is there a God, is there not a God? He's, he's really getting into it deeply. And at the same time, any, even a new person coming across this purport will also read things like, 
uh, like like you say, it speaks to the doubts of the impersonalists. Prabhupada brings this up, persons with a poor fund of knowledge. So if you're reading this purport and you in fact have a poor fund of knowledge, you might think, well, he's he's speaking to me. Maybe I should uh, brush up a little bit on my knowledge. <laughs> and, and then he, he, he finishes the whole purport by saying the conclusion is that persons who consider the Lord's activities material are certainly mistaken. So mm -hmm. that no matter where you're coming from, whether you're on board, thinking about getting on board, distinctly off board, he's so strong in his certitude about what he's saying that you, you have to like get up to speed with his with his arguments it seems he's exhorting his his readers to really pick up the thread and and not just uh, no matter where they're coming from mentally or philosophically the um and it, it seems that Srila Prabhupada is actually above all of our heads the he's speaking from the the platform as, as you said he's sort of making some assumptions uh, and and not what's the word uh, bothering to demonstrate that they're true he's just assuming them uh, the Lord has different energies the prophets at, in this purport he's not going to uh, argue why that's so he just assumes it and uh, as readers we may not even know what that means. Uh, the Lord has different energies. Um, the the un, unschooled reader really may not know what that means, but the we're getting a, a, a transcendental vibration of knowledge. It's not exactly a, an intellectual exercise. We're hearing absolute truth. And Srila Prabhupada is confident that it will act on the ear and, and the heart. I remember that in a meeting with Srila Prabhupada in Boston, Prabhupada said that my Guru Maharaj used to speak from the highest elevated platform. He said, even when he would speak in Bengali, I could not understand. Said, but I would go on hearing. So we read these purports, we read, we read the Bhagavatam, and how much do we really understand? Even if we do understand the Lord has different energies, to what extent do we realize that? To what extent do we really understand that? When Krishna, Srila Prabhupada is talking about the internal energy, what exactly is the internal energy? How well do we understand it? So all of these things are really um, above our heads where we can say that there's uh, sort of turning around, we can say there's so much depth to all of these all of this. And of course, the the point about Krishna's having energies is crucial to um, all of Srila Prabhupada's line of thought here that there's, there's Krishna, there's the absolute truth with energies. As soon as you strip out the idea of energies, you have an impersonal absolute. And you have uh, essentially no way to explain the qualities and, and activities of the Lord, except by resort to some sort of compromised notion of um, in which some sort of material connection is assigned to Krishna. Uh, but as soon as we accept that the Lord has energies, uh, everything becomes uh, possible. Of course, Vishnath Chakravarti Thakur raises the question that if Krishna has a material energy, I'm paraphrasing, if Krishna has a material energy, then what about his being all spiritual? We accept that there are material energies that are bewildering the conditioned souls. But if Krishna is in some way, if the absolute truth is in some way connected with this material energy, then how is how is, is his transcendental absoluteness maintained? That's another. Uh, 
question um, that he raises. And Prabhupada answers it in the purport by saying that the energies are uh, one with Krishna, and yet they're not. And Krishna is one with his energies and yet separated, uh, different from his energies. And that, as you, uh, as we heard, that's the you know, oneness and difference that the Lord has. Christina has a question here. There is something. Does he remember you? Yeah, she has. Follow-up questions. Um, let's see, and we'll come back to Tulsi Priya. There's an actor named Christian Bale, who famously played Batman, and his speech sounded perfectly American as Batman. Someone who just watches the movie and then finds out Bale is British might wonder how it is that Bale isn't American, since his vowels and consonants were completely American sounding. And anyone who sounds like that is born and bred American. But Bale is very talented, a very talented actor. And so his English speaking ability is transcendental to American or British dialect. And he intended to sound American, so he did. Okay, so we have an example of being transcendental to the qualities that one might display. And thank you for that. Tulsi Priya's follow-up question. Hi, Krishna. So um, when Prabhupada talks about, the, you, you, brought, you touched on this with the external energy, and my understanding is that Prabhupada says it's, it's a matter of consciousness for one who is in Krishna consciousness. There is no material world. Everything is spiritual. Um, but going back to my question, um, Let's see, I'm, I'm trying to hear everything and at the same time my question and, and get my question together. So it's it's not, I have to gather things. Um, I was just reminded of uh, in the purport to Bhagavad Gita 2.7, Prabhupada says, there is no difference between Krishna's within and without. And one who has no sense of this understanding is the greatest fool in trying to understand Bhagavad Gita. So, so then we have this, this concept of within and without, which again, seems to me to be you know, dependent on one's consciousness, um, the material world or the external energy exists in uh, sort of, I don't want to say, I guess the only way I can put it is in response to the jiva's desire to be separate from Krishna. So if you want to be separate, then you're, that's your, that's your realm is outside of Krishna, but it's, it's an illusion. It's, it's, it's Maya, right? And then my, my question is, as an analogy of understanding how we're one with and different. If I think of, let's say, an analogy of the human body, you know, you have limbs, you have organs, you know, and, and some parts are more important than others. You can't exist without a brain, you can't exist without a heart. And then you have little cells, you know, and all those cells are, they function and they have a place and a purpose, but they can't exist separately from the entire body. They immediately, if you separate them, they, they die. So I'm wondering, is it, is it useful to think of the jivas as sort of like little cells, you know, that they're, they're you know, their DNA is the same as the, as the body. Well, but it may be useful for you. <laughs> and if anyone else finds it useful, they can pick it up. Yeah. Uh, it's not one of our standard examples, but any example that gets us to the point that mm -hmm. we're, we're part of Krishna mm -hmm. um, is could be accepted. All right, thank you. The, uh, but all the points leading up to your example, they all hold well, so thank you for that. Thank you, Marish. Hi, Krishna. And I don't know if I sort of 
cut you off prematurely, but there we are. The main the main point was is that we we can be qualitative, but as it was stated in the purport you just read, we're subordinate. In other words, we can have the same quality, but only one can be the supreme, and and everything else is subordinate. So it seems to me that that's the main difference that we're subordinate. That sounds right to me. Okay. I guess because how do you quantify spirit, you know, to, to say we're, you know, a smaller quantity, you know, what's a little bit of spirit versus big spirit, you know, it's all spirit. So to me, the idea of subordination makes more sense than saying we're small, but that's the example Prabhupada uses. And sometimes I have a hard time wrapping my mind around it. And we are um, described as being one ten thousandth the tip of a hair. Right. So that that's small. Yeah. Um, that's small. Um, and or any uh, Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sarasati, conditioned soul, conditional souls wanted to play God and became less than dog. The envy continues as we want to bring Krishna down to our fallen situation. Yes. The uh, this is somehow to be equal to God, either by bringing ourselves up to his level or bringing him down to ours. Either way to establish that there's really no difference between ourselves and God. The, yeah. Pancha Tattva, Chintya Beta Beta Tattva is such a fine philosophical expression. It explains Krishna's connection with and difference from all of his energies, including the jivas. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, wonderful. Thank you. Let's see what happens if you read ahead. The sound effects, if you hear them, are, are the rain. Welcome to the rainy season here in India. Kridayam Ujamor Bhasya Kamas Chikrida Shanyataha Swatas Chiptasya Chapatam Boys are enthusiastic to play with other boys or with, ve with various diversions because they are encouraged by desire. But there's no possibility of such desire for the Lord because he is self-satisfied and detached from everything at all times. So the unstated part of the verse is, then what's he doing performing activities? Boys perform activities because they have desires of some sort or other. Uh, they're keen to play video games, or they're keen to play with other boys, with their friends. Lord Krishna's um, Atmatripta. Um, yeah, Tripta, self-satisfied. Swata Tripta, self-satisfied. And Nivritta, detached. So what is he doing? Performing activities. Since the Supreme Personality of Godhead is one without a second, there's no possibility that anything besides him can exist. He expands himself by his energies in multi-forms of self-expansions and separated expansions as well. Just as fire expands itself 
by heat and light. The forms, the direct forms of the Lord are self-expansions. The living entities are um, se separated expansions. Since there's no other existence besides the Lord himself, the Lord's association with anything manifests his association with himself. So here, Srila Prabhupada is addressing that question that we mentioned earlier, that, well, somehow or other, the Lord is, is connected with the material energy, even if you say, well, it's just sort of an arm's length relationship uh, that the, the material energies are doing things on their own. Still, he's connected with it. He's connected with the modes of nature. He's connected with the material energy. So uh, doesn't that make him materially uh, compromised? And here Prabhupada's answer is that whatever the Lord's associating with, he's associating with himself. Because everything is his energy. There's nothing outside of his own existence. In Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says, Maya tatami dam sarvam jagadav yakta murtina matstani sarva putani majaham teshavastataha. The complete manifestation of the cosmic situation is an expansion of the Lord Himself in His impersonal feature. All things are situated in him only, yet he is not in them. That is the opulence of the Lord's attachment and detachment. He is attached to everything, yet he's detached from all. Any comments or questions here? Yes, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Could there be another way of putting it, just for the sake of my own understanding, to say that he is connected to everything because it's his energy, but he is not dependent on his energies. They're dependent on him. That's also true. But the, the real... Uh, doubt here just comes with dependent, independent, but he's connected with these energies. Mm -hmm. So how is he not material? He's connected with ignorance. He's connected with passion. He's connected with goodness. Mm -hmm. so how is he not material when he's connected with these things? Closely connected, connected at a distance, put it however you want. But he's connected with these material energies. So how is that possible? And also the, the doubt is expressed, well, his pastimes seem to be manifestation of something having to do with material qualities. Uh, as you mentioned, time is passing, or Kendra Prabhu mentioned time is passing, he's getting older, or things are happening one after another, just the fact that something's happening implies time, time appears. Uh, implies material conditions. So how is this all possible? And again, Srila Prabhupada's answer here is that nothing's happening outside of Krishna himself. Uh, and therefore everything he's in touch with is spiritual. The Kendra Prabhu. Oh, thank you, Maharaj. Um, I was noticing uh, alongside this that the purports that Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti has in this section are also quite long and uh, deal with a lot of things that Prabhupada himself derives from and takes. There's one uh, sentence in this uh, purport to his verse um, number three that I, I thought was a shed a nice light, different angle on, on, the, on the question of uh, why Krishna acts. And if, if you like, I could read it. Um, Please. He, he says, for children, the inspiration for playing is kama. This is the natural cause of inclination for playing. Or, 
the desire to play arises by the impetus of other children. <laughs> but because the Supreme Lord is self-satisfied, how can Kama be the cause? And since no one exists except the Lord, how does the desire to play arise by other influence? Mm. Yeah, children, you know, Johnny, would you like to, would, why don't we, let's go out and play. And Johnny says, okay, because he's influenced by the uh, other children. But who is it that's going to in influence Krishna to perform um, activities? Uh, he's self-satisfied, he's detached. Uh, where, where is the question of desire arising? Also, this also becomes relevant as we proceed to the 10th can canto, where it seems to the materialists that Krishna's uh, ruled by desires. He's uh, dancing with these young women out of, uh, obviously, out of kama, out of desire. So aren't these just material activities then? Or even aren't these, the, I mean, this is awful. You know, we, we may worship all Krishna, but we're not going to worship this Krishna because just see how he's contaminated by uh, desire. So that these kind of doubts may, may enter our thinking and therefore they're being cleared uh, early on here in the in the third canto and as you pointed out before the doubts even get uh, they, they don't they don't really get a chance to be just expressed and left as they are they're going to be answered at once should the problems not can give us a chance to uh, be victimized by these doubts or to be left alone with these doubts even for a moment they they're going to be answered immediately The Panchatattva says, oh, we're running out of time. Is attachment and detachment another way to describe a chintya beta beta tattva? Not meaning attachment is affection, but a connection. Well, yes, he's attached and detached at the same time. That's certainly um, one that you know, contradictory. It's, it's oneness and, and difference at the same time. Um, not meaning attachment as affection, but connection. I don't see what that has to do with Chinchu Veda Tattu. I don't get the tag there. I, I guess what I was trying to say, Maharaj, was that He's Krishna's connected with everything. It's all his energy, but he's detached from everything. Yes. Yes. I didn't, I didn't want the, the attachment is often uh, used as, as a synonym for affection. I didn't mm -hmm. want it. I didn't mean it in that direction. Okay. Okay. Tosi Priya says he's also the source of source of playfulness. He doesn't desire to play because he's bored, but because it's inherent in his nature. Yes, true. Murari Gupta says, I've never been troubled by these deep questions and issues. Is that a defect or a blessing? It's a blessing. Blessed are you, Murari Gupta, not to have these doubts. All right, we have a few minutes left for Kirtan. Who's our Kirtan this evening? Krishna Kanti. Mm-hmm. 
Krishna Kantea Prabhu, there's something with your audio. We can't hear you, I'm sorry to say. No, didn't fix it, I'm sorry to say. No, nope, something's not quite set up there. Hmm. I remember this happened before with your system there. All right, Krishna. Yeah. What to do? Oh, I was looking forward to hearing. Yeah. Let's see, meet with me just maybe five minutes before next class time. We'll try to sort out the audio issue. Is that okay? Thank you, Prabhu. Hey, Vijay Krishna Prabhu, are you back from the beach or you want to lead? Of course, I'm back from the beach. I want to lead. <laughs> <laughs> May I, Maharaj? Of course. Yes, without cartels, without Mridanga, just clapping and my wonderful voice. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jai Om Vishnupad, Purman Sukhita, Jatacharya. Ashto Timsi Shri Shima A C Bhakti Vedanta Shami Naraj Purupada Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnavinda Ki Jai Nama Charja Shida Vridas Thakur Ki Jai Vem Sipaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Vedantar Shri Vashadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Sri Sri Dadha Krishna Gopinat Sham Pandradha Kamigidi Gurutan Kijay Vrindavan Dham Kijay Nabadip Tam Kijay Javanna Kuli Kijay Kanga Mani Kijay Naman Mani Kijay Tulsi Devi Kijay Bhakti Devi Kijay Stamaveta Bhakti Vrinda Kijay All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. Over Kananande. We were we were uh, 
blessed to have the association of Kripa Moya Prabhu and his wife Adi Shakti, disciples of His Holiness Ramapad Swami from St. Louis, and they were very happy to attend the class. Thank you, Gurudev. Thank you so much, Kripa Moya and Adi Shakti. Blessed are the associations of Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. 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 Doug is recovering from COVID and Shara has it right now and she's doing okay. Oh. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you, I won't prescribe anything. I guess you you already have your, all the prescriptions. That read Mahamantra and whatever else. <laughs> we wish you a quick back in for you and Sharma and that you're Thank you everyone for being here. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Srimad Ki Jai. Jai Advaita Maharaj Ki Jai. The Kendra Prabhu Ki Jai. 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 Jai Krishna Prabhu Ki Jai. Oh my. You're very oh. kind, Maharaj. Hari, Hari Bo. Hari Bo. Krishna. So, Krishna Kante Prabhu, if you can hear me, I'll meet you with you maybe five minutes before class on Wednesday. S sort out your audio. Thank you very much. Hari Krishna. Hari Krishna. Hari Bo.